Welcome back to another Credit Card News live stream. I'm Cal Barton. It's good to have you this weekend. I want to say what's up to Danny. Thank you for the super chat. Said, what's up, Cal? Miss you, man. I miss you guys too. Uh, Cheryl, I see you. Miss Barton, F. Davis. F. Davis, I got um, your question. I'm going to answer that um, that you asked me in the um, uh, in the member community page post. I got you on one of these slides. So, also, Lunchbox701, how you doing? Dennis McMillian, I haven't seen you here before, so welcome to the live stream, Dennis. All right, let's get to the slides here. Let's get to the news real quick. All right, let's pull it up. So, the first uh, bit of news here, let's get to the beginning here. Shoppers go deep on buy now, pay later, and e-commerce as holiday uh, shopping ramps up. Driven by an inflation-fueled demand for deals, the official kickoff uh, weekend of the 2022 shopping season um, outperformed events of the past two years, albeit with a new bias for more point-of-sale credit card and financing and increased reliance on digital channels than ever before. Payments just published survey, uh, a survey found that 33% of shoppers who wanted to make purchases over the weekend opted out over cash and credit concerns. Another report found that another 31% of respondents who bowed out said stores were too crowded during Black Friday weekend, reflecting an odd imbalance uh, between high prices and creating uh, that created the season. So people are having trouble with inflation. Um, I saw a report just early today that uh, people were having issues because the sale price was the same, like they, they put an item on sale and it was just back down to regular price. And so people can't afford to pick up that extra item or two for a stocking stuffer or to buy, you know, a gift for everyone. So people are just saying they're just foregoing that. And you know, there's big concerns about what, what happens in 2023 next year with uh, the recession looming over our heads. So people are really feeling the pain um, at their wallet. And they're resorting to buy now pay later services or you know uh, uh, credit products where they can split those uh purchases pay those purchase payments up into like a longer term you know two three six month period so next story crypto firm blockfi files for bankruptcy crypto firm blockfi has filed for chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in the united states uh bankruptcy protection uh our bankruptcy court for the, for the District of New Jersey as the FTX fallout continues to spread. So this is called contagion. Um, in the filing, the company indicated that it had more than 100,000 creditors with liabilities and assets ranging from $1 billion to $10 billion. That's with a B, billion. Uh, in the filing, the company listed an outstanding $275 million loan um, to FTX US, the American arm of Sam Bankman frieds now bankrupt empire. BlackFi's bankruptcy filing shows that the company's largest disclosed client has a balance of nearly 28 million dollars so listen everybody is hurting if you haven't pulled your money out they say what, what's the the common phrase amongst the the crypto bros is not your not your keys not your coin something like that so you want to pull you know I, i'm the last person to be speaking on you know crypto advice i i've never been you know, enthusiastic about that space. I don't think it's ready for prime time. You need regulation. You need safeguards like FDIC insurance or SIPC insurance. In the case of a brokerage, you just don't have that here. And the upside is just a gamble. And I've been saying this since the top of the year, since I started this um, live stream. Um, and unfortunately, I, I, I'm curious as to know what happens to the BlockFi card where if you're still using the card, is it still in use? I need to do some digging on that. If you know, let me know in the comment section. But uh, what happens to your rewards? Does it get locked up as well? Or is it going to be, you know, held for you um, in, in a cash, as a cash balance in US dollars? F. Davis said, crypto is not safe. It, F. Davis, you could not be more true. And it really doesn't, you know, unless you're trying to get rich quick, unless if you're trying to gamble and you want, you want the thrill of the gamble, you want to go, you know, play slots or, or, or play some sort of you know roulette then that's your ticket you can get that rush but if you want a safe investment or if you want to you know uh if you want to have a long-term decent investment then crypto is not it it's not 
um, feasible. It's not doing work for people where it, it makes sense. It's not, you can't use it as a currency because it fluctuates in value too much. So um, the, the underlying you know, technology can be good. I mean, it looks, it seems promising, keyword seems, but it's not there yet. So there's no reason to enter that space. So what are the credit card surcharges and where are they legal? So according to November data from the Nielsen report, consumer and commercial credit debit and prepaid general purpose cards generated $9.7 trillion in transaction in 2021, a 22% increase over the previous year along with all the increased credit card usage there's been an uptick in surcharges which are fees that payment processors and credit card companies charge merchants and retailers for a long time these fees were not felt by consumers but between the increased number of customers paying with a credit card and the rise in cost of doing business in recent years surcharges are becoming far more commonplace as a way to help merchants cover their expenses so listen retailers and merchants they love to pass on the the price to consumers when they can if they can get away with it i've seen that locally because i'm in the new york area and I'll, there's a few of the gas stations near me that are charging 10 cent or i think it's yeah 10 cents extra if you use a credit card as opposed to a debit card and cash so i typically avoid those now because i can find you know if i just go a little bit further down the road i can get to a gas station where i can use my credit card and get four percent back right with the um with my verizon visa card and um you know there's other places that i've heard of like different um restaurants that will charge more for a credit card transaction so here's what they have to do if a merchant wants to charge you a, a surcharge they have to have a clear disclosure of fees prior to the transaction so that's going to be like on the receipt it's going to clearly state they're charging um what percentage for extra for that credit card um, the surcharges must be listed on receipts uh, the cap of four percent on surcharges so they can't go any higher than four percent uh, above the, uh, the 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 cost of the transaction with the debit card or cash and so they also can't charge you any surcharges on debit cards so that's actually a big no-no like it, you can get fined for that and so you can actually report different merchants for that practice if you see someone charging and i think you and i believe it's nationwide that you can't even uh have a minimum amount that you can um that you have to you have to buy from a store convenience store or a gas station if you're using debit a lot of places are trying to tell you that you have to spend you know a minimum of five or ten dollars and i don't think there should be a, a minimum I, I believe that's that's the rule at the moment Next story, it's a deluge of fraud claims um, adds to concerns about credit scores. So the consumer credit scoring system has long been opaque and confusing. So that means it's closed off, you can't see through it. Uh, one, one change intended to help people and navigate the system has created a whole new set of problems. In recent years, the government website has made it easier for people to file claims of identity theft so they can remove fraudulent accounts from their credit reports. Those reports are the basis of credit scores sold by Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion to bank to banks as they make lending decisions. So it seems like there's more and more people utilizing that easy, easy to access online interface to probably make, you know, triple, quadruple the claims that they should be and, and claiming things that they know are, are accurate. So they're actually having a problem with that. So we got to keep an eye on that, see if they're going to have any sort of pushback maybe they're going to introduce new measures that you have to, you know, you have to go through and it's going to probably make it harder for the consumer going forward. Next, we have banks plan to start reimbursing some victims of Zelle scams. So, um, and if you didn't know, I actually put this in my newsletter. You can actually sign up on my website. I had this in my newsletter a few days ago. Uh, the seven banks that own the payments network, Zelle, are preparing a major rule change early next year that will require the network's member banks to compensate customers who fall victim to certain kinds of scams. According to two people familiar with this, the plans, the shift would reverse the network's current policy, which typically sticks customers with the losses on any Zelle transactions that the customers physically initiated themselves, even if they were tricked into sending their cash to a thief. A growing number of scams using Zelle has angered lawmakers and regulators 
who have pressured banks to better protect or indemnify their customers. So listen, I, Cheryl, I know you had big problems with this and I actually do too, because you know, when you're sending a payment, sometimes these are a few hundred to a few thousand dollars worth of uh, payments we're sending to somebody for, you know, maybe you had a contractor come over or a landscaper come over in my case. You don't want to send that to the wrong person and then be SOL out of luck when you send it to the wrong person. Now, you definitely want to triple check who you're sending it to. Another uh, one thing that uh, Cheryl taught me is that you want to send a test transaction or a test payment of one dollar first just to make sure they got it verify they got that one dollar and then send the rest i think that's a good um way to go about things but i think what you're going to see moving forward is that the banks are going to introduce some some safeguards that look a lot like that te test payment but they're just going to put it in software form so it's going to force everybody to go through those extra steps to verify you want to send it to that person which i think is is fine you know a lot of people don't have like they don't have empathy for people who send their payments out, but it, it just, even if they're, you know, you're, you're completely relaxed, you're too, too relaxed and you make a mistake. You don't want that to happen to anybody that's, you know, that's, you know, working within the rules of the system, an innocent person. You don't want to see that happen if you can avoid it. So next story, collaboration aims to push virtual card use in hotels. So Sabre Corporation and Confirma pay have partnered with MasterCard to accelerate the use of virtual cards for business-to-business -business travel payments. This builds on Sabre's August acquisition of ConfirmaPay, digitization of travel payments with virtual cards helps address the challenges associated with B2B or business-to-business -business leisure and corporate travel payments. The single-use card numbers provide a link between booking and associated payments to third-party suppliers and travel buyers and suppliers can track and record or reconcile payments. That's going to be good. Listen, virtual cars are really taking over. Um, I don't, I'm not sure how many of you have, uh, you know, at businesses. Let me know if you have a business and if you do, what kind, I want to shout you out. Um, that's, uh, that's really, uh, that's really great. More people should start them, uh, but they're tough. Um, virtual cards, if you don't know, are basically a digital card that's connected to your actual real card that you have. And they're, they can be disconnected anytime. So you can do cool things like sign up for a, um, a subscription service. Maybe you're not sure about it. You want to sign up for one month and you don't want the, the chance of, you know, that reoccurring payment to happen. If you forget about it, then you can, you can actually, um, post date the, the virtual card to lock up or, or be canceled right when you sign up for the subscription so you don't have to remember to disconnect or or you know um, to disconnect the subscription or to cancel it which is nice because i i know that's happened to me a, a few times over the years where i i want to get that nice deal for that first month subscription and then you end up forgetting and obviously you're going to call back and they're going to say listen there's nothing we can do buddy like you you willingly signed up for that we're going to take that first month that's that's on you charge it to the game and um, this kind of prevents that from happening. Also, if you are going to like, uh, if you're out of the country or if you're out of town and you're going to a store you're not really sure about, it's lo it looks a little shady, or you're on a, a website that doesn't look familiar to you, you can use a virtual card to make the payment. And then you can kind of breathe easy knowing that if they, you can, you can make it a one-time use virtual card so that it can never be charged again. Or in some cases, if you're with, I believe, if you have an X1 card, you can, you can set up a virtual card to so that you can't uh, a transaction cannot be made over a certain amount so let's say you want to limit that virtual card to twenty dollars per month in transactions as soon as another transaction that goes over that twenty dollar threshold it will just automatically be declined i really think those are cool features So next story we have, please look at my metal credit card. Um, metal credit cards have become not only a reality, but a mundanity. That's a new word. Listen, I'm learning the words today. If somebody knows how to pronounce that, help me out. I hope I did. I hope I did a, a pretty good job. Um, so I'm, I'm going to assume that means commonplace. Once limited to products like the Centurion that require proof of high net worth and a history of lavish spending, the cards are now available to pretty much 
anyone with passable credit. It's made me think. This makes me think about Shanika. If you're in the audience, let me know. You love uh, uh, metal credit cards, um, and I do too. Even Venmo, the cash swapping app, is enticing people to use their balance like a bank account with a metal debit card in pink or black. As a marketing play, the cards are brilliant, but they're also an object lesson in the life cycle of the consumer status symbol. When everyone's special, no one is. Metal credit cards may have begun as markers of extreme wealth, but they were spawned by something far more pedestrian, consumer loyalty programs. You know, I can think of I can think of a few different metal credit cards off the top of my head right now that that you wouldn't think should be metal. For example, the Chime debit card, which is like, you know, it's 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 like a credit builder card if you don't know. Um you can actually get a metal version of that they had a, a program where if you made like 40 transactions in a month then you get the metal version um a lot of no annual fee cards come in metal form like the um the new uh autograph card from wells fargo that's actually kind of secretly metal it's got like a, a metal strip in the middle sort of like the chase freedom preferred card um the verizon visa card is metal um i have a and we're going to talk about this later. I got a new um, business card. Sign up for Amex Business, right? Here. We're going to talk about that. Amex Business. That's uh, with uh, Amazon Prime. That's metal. That's new annual fee. And there's a few others that I'm forgetting right now. Who Does anybody know some others here? The Apple card is, is metal. L look at that. You're not supposed to use the physical card, though. But um, it's just... These companies are using that as a, a marketing ploy, play just to you know get people more excited. It's it's nice to use metal, have it in your hand, feels good. So next story: score free fast shipping with this Amex card benefit. If you have an American Express credit card, you may be missing out on a valuable perk that could make your next online order cheaper. You can get free shipping with complimentary Shop Runner membership. Shop Runner Shop Runner usually costs seventy nine dollars annually, so this is a valuable perk. Shop Runner partners with more than 100 stores, brands like Allbirds, Under Armour, American Eagle Outfitters, um, Cosmetics, Pro Flowers, and a bunch of others. Um, once you enroll in this service, you can enjoy free delivery in as little as two days when making qualifying purchases. You can also take advantage of free shipping and returns. You know, I haven't used Shop Runner. Um, I don't think I've ever used it, but uh, I'm, I'm seeing it come up more and more. But that's good that they are uh, giving you that benefit. Um, Danny, thank you for the super chat. You said, yay, welcome to the Business Prime Amazon Cal. Hey, thank you. We're going hey, to discuss this in depth a little bit later. But I appreciate that, Danny. Hey, um, thank you for the super chat. So um, this is for, for F. Davis, all right? So F. Davis, as you can see, he asked me, paying taxes with a credit card, is it a good idea or a bad idea? I always wanted to know. So... This is actually a was a blog post recently from Chase. So Chase is actually putting their name behind this idea. So there's there's certain things with credit cards that are there's certain um, kind of strategies and schemes that credit card companies don't like. For example, they credit card companies see gaming as um, churning. So when you sign up for a card just to get the sign up bonus and then cancel it that's considered churning they don't like that they don't even like you discussing that um and there's a few other uh you know strategies like that that people kind of deploy that they don't like but this is actually being kind of co-signed by chase they're saying yes you can you can use your credit card to pay taxes some of the pros are um you get more time to pay obviously uh you, you know maybe you have a credit card with a zero percent apr for 12 to 15 months then you basically have 15 months to pay that balance off or, or pay your taxes interest free, which is really nice. Or um, you maybe you just need a, a few more weeks. You just need an, an extra month to pay it off. Then that buys you that time. Just use your credit card and pay it off before the um, you know pay that statement balance before you know the bill is due. Another good reason is for the sign up bonus. So a lot of credit cards come with a very high uh, threshold to meet for that sign up bonus. You know, it could be anywhere from uh, five, seven hundred to even 
uh, $3,000 to uh, of a minimum spend to meet that sign up bonus. So if you have a pretty large credit, uh, I'm sorry, a tax bill, then you could use your credit card to meet that sign up bonus. And any fees would just be negligible because you're getting such a big bonus in return. And so that brings us to the cons, which is a convenience fee that can be around 2%. It could be more. Um, you can't pay directly. Uh, you can't use a credit card to pay for your taxes to the government directly. You have to use like a, a payment. Uh, I forgot the technical term for this organization, but a payment processor, I believe that's what it is. And they're, they're going to charge you a convenience fee of a few percentage points. So you know, maybe you have a credit card that earns, I don't believe there's any credit cards that earn a, a bonus rate for taxes. So maybe you, maybe you just on a sign up bonus, your card earns 3%. Or maybe it's like the Discover It card where, well, maybe your card is earning a bonus rate just for the first year or first few months. I could see you coming out ahead that way. But the best way to do that is with a flat 2% card because you're going to earn 2% no matter what the category is. And that would be the, the card to use. And then you're also going to be facing higher interest. So listen, credit cards are one of the highest uh, interest credit products. We're seeing now, you know, the, I think the average interest rate now is about 18%, 17%, and they can go over 30%. There's actually no limit unless you're with a, uh, uh, if you, unless you have a card with a, uh, a federally, um, a bank that's uh, like, like Navy Federal, a credit union, they're limited to the interest that they can charge. And I believe it's around 18%. And that's why their interest rates are, are so low at credit unions um, but yeah if they're a federally chartered credit union then the interest rate is going to be relatively low but any you know if you're with credit one bank or some of these sleazy shady banks they can go up over 30 percent community does that synchrony does that so just be aware and if you haven't yet please hit that like button if you like to see news like this you want to see more streams around in the credit card niche then hit that like button for me and it's going to be great for all of us I appreciate you guys. So next door, we have Max Levin's war on credit cards. So in 2012, Max Levin found a, founded a firm which ushered in a new kind of consumer lending. Sure, PayPal led the charge in convincing the masses to buy stuff online, but so many people still pay for online purchases with a pre-internet product, old-fashioned credit cards. I did, what, how are credit cards, who would label them old-fashioned? We're, it's still the most used. The I mean, they're coming up with products left and right and center. I take offense to that. <laughs> there are 191 million Americans with credit card accounts. Today, those people collectively owe $925 billion. If I got to have an echo right now, billion dollars. Just imagine that in a, in, a, in a large cave echoing around. A figure that took its largest leap in 20 years in the third quarter of this year. A firm of, offers a different model called Buy Now, Pay Later. An online shopper is offered a 0% short-term installment plan or loan for their purchases right at the virtual checkout. Um, the way these newish financing companies make money they get paid a processing fee by merchants who partner with the lenders to encourage sales. They also collect interest or late fees from cu customers who miss payments or interest on long-term loans. So, you know, buy now, pay later is, I believe that this credit product is, is just what I call a feature that can easily be added into any credit card issuers, you know, system. So I'm not sure how, how well they're going to hold up. I, I believe that, um, the Apple car is introducing a buy now, pay later feature. Um, truly, you know, Amazon, the store car has a buy now, pay later. There's 0%. You can pay over three to six to 12 months, depending on the price. So I, I don't think they have enough. Um, I don't think this is safe enough of a, of a bet for these companies. I think this is a feature that can easily be introduced, you know, kind of uh, industry wide. But listen, this is just a slightly different. It's, it's just basically this is a a credit card just you don't earn rewards and you have a slightly longer window to pay it off i don't get why you would want to do that 
that's kind of beyond me but um i i i think that the wording kind of helps people helps people get over that um i think i think what's happening with the buy now pay letter is that you don't have to hurt your credit by um going through a hard credit pull it's a one and done thing so as soon as you're done with the payments you don't have to deal with them anymore and um it's offered at checkout so i can i can understand that it's just an ease of use factor there um so that that that's probably what people are looking at so uh next story crypto exchange crack and lays off 1100 employees so listen it is doomsday out here in the crypto industry and i can't help but cover it it's uh their heads are rolling and it's uh I've, I've been saying this to family and friends i've been saying this to you guys as well i am even when crypto was high as a kite even when you had the dogecoin millionaire out there when you had elon musk on snl hyping it up to what you know bitcoin's at seventy thousand. i just love sitting back in the bleachers and watching the show i mean the 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 exuberance was at an all-time high you know i had people reaching out to me from from places i didn't even know I, I forgot about people and they come back and say hey i got a guy who's in the, i got a bitcoin guy who's gonna you know you need to invest with i'm like nah that's not happening so kraken one of the world's largest crypto exchanges is laying off about 30 percent of its headcount or 1100 people in order to adapt to current market conditions co-founder and ceo jesse powell said powell wrote that slowing growth prompted by macroeconomic and geopolitical factors had muted consumer demand lower tr trading volumes and cut signups so listen if people are getting caught with their pants down and um <laughs> for lack of a better phrase here and crypto people are running from crypto like it's like it's a monster um so next uh discover it uh just revealed their q1 bonus categories so i actually had a video out on this if you haven't checked it out just kind of went in depth but you'll earn five percent cash back at grocery stores drug stores and select streaming services uh and that's going to go from january 1st to march 31st of next year on up to fifteen hundred dollars in purchases when you activate um and so you have to manually activate that within the app or online um, it's going to exclude the big box stores like Walmart and Target. That's pretty standard fare. And um, plus the each quarterly bonus category will be announced at the beginning of each quarter instead of in advance. So um, initially I was kind of all negative on this, that they made a pretty major change. You, typically um, with the Discovery Ed card, they would announce that bonus all four quarters of the year. They would announce those bonus categories in December like right now but now they're going to go quarter by quarter like the chase freedom flex card um you know i personally would like to see everything up front just so i had an idea how the card's looking what what the value of it is some people said that they don't really care that much um, they'd only need to you know just let them know when you know when that month comes up and they said that it, this gives them more kind of leeway to to be agile and compete harder with the chase freedom flex card and other cars that do rotating bonus categories um so if if they see the freedom flex offering better categories then they could actually one up them so if that's the case then that's that's all good but i just don't see that really happening so next black friday spending is up 12 percent despite inflation um so in spite of inflation american consumers spent the day of thanksgiving shopping both online and off and dining out lending to double digit sales growth that's according to Mar mastercard spending pulse report for black friday it showed increases in spending across non-automotive categories. Retail sales on Friday rose 12% year over year. And the report found that with in-store sales increasing 12% on e-commerce, sales seeing a 14% growth. We're going to skip that. It's influencers. All right. So this is this is the big deal here. Um, American Express has, uh, is allowing you to get a proof of their cards. It's called buy with confidence and you're going to be able to get a approved without hurting your score. So this is what happens. American Express announced that it's piloting a new program 
where select applicants can find out if they are approved without impacting their score. If the applicant is approved and chooses to accept the credit card, then their credit score may be impacted. This pilot program is unlike pre-approved offers since applicants will know with 100% certainty if they are approved for um, US personal cards for which they've applied. Additionally, there is no additional form or information that the applicant needs to submit after receiving the decision on their application. So a few things I wanna talk about here. Um, I personally, from my experience, if I was a pre, if I was pre-approved for a car, and this had, and this is the case for all of the different car, credit card issuers that I've worked with, that I've done business with, if I was pre-approved, I always got approved. Now I know in some cases, you know, I've seen anecdotes where other people said, you know, once they did the hard pull, they saw some extra, you know, information. You're supposed to see, I, I believe they're supposed to see the same information with the soft pull and the hard pull. But um, for some reason, um, some people were getting declined. So there is a the degree of chance with a pre-approval that it won't go through and you won't get approved. So this is nice that they're introducing this. Um, I wish that they went a step further and would show you your credit limit. That would be amazing. And that would be a really good kind of value add to, to, to consumers because um, you have cars like the Apple card. Um, and I had actually a video on this. Um, you have cards from uh, Dover Federal Credit Union, from uh, Bank of Omaha, the uh, FNBO. You can get credit cards with them. And also, I can't forget about the um, the other Goldman Sachs card, which is the uh, GM Rewards card. You can you can see that you're pre-approved. So they'll they'll basically approve you and show you your credit limit up front. That's nice to have that information, especially if you're really seeking to get a certain limit and you have the option to, you know, accept or deny it. But this is a nice step in the uh, correct, in the right direction. And if you guys want access to that, you actually, um, I can post a link to this in the chat because you have to, uh, if you want an American Express car and you want to go through this approval um, process where you, you know for a uh, hundred percent certainty you have to go through this specific link and I'll post it right here in the chat for you so if you guys want to take uh, if you want an American Express car and you want to know for sure then use that link all right so next up we have digital banking didn't kill bank branches but chat bots will so predictions of the death are at least the decline of bank branches have been around for a while the predictions haven't come true. However, the number of branches has declined over the past 10 years from 85,000 to 20 from in 2012 to 72,000 in this year, an annual decline of 1.7%. But make no mistake, bank branches are far from dead. Despite the additions of new online and mobile banking features and functionality over the past decade, digital banking simply does not do everything bank customers need it to do. According to a recent study from Co from Cornerstone Advisors, 40% of consumers between the ages of 21 and 55 who, who contacted a human when opening a checking account said they tried to get the information they needed online but couldn't find it. And 28% said the bank's website or mobile app didn't support what they needed it to do. So listen, I, I'm a big proponent. I'm a big fan of neo banks, online banks, because they're just so competitive. They offer you, like with SoFi, who I'm a big uh, a user of for the last three years, they just give you incentives because they're trying to gain market share. They give you incentives like, you know, um, uh, every time you log into the app, they give you, you know, a couple uh, uh, rewards points. And they'll give you a much higher, like exponentially higher interest rate. Right now, SoFi is offering 3.25% on their savings account. What? 3.25%? <laughs> Compare that to Bank of America where you're getting 0.001%. Even though the Federal Reserve are, you know, raised their rates, those banks don't have to. They know they have so much. They know that they have people, uh, especially older people, who are not going to switch. And I think typically a person will stay with their bank for, on average, seven years or so. So it's a long time. So as soon as they lock you in, they know they got you for a while because people don't want to go through the, you know, the hassle of switching their direct deposit bank even though it's easier than ever now but um it's not and i just want to say another thing 
so with with a bank like SoFi and you have you know banks like uh, Capital One with the 360 account or Ally Bank, they're all offering such high interest rates. It's really nice to get that you know um, so just tens of dollars. So you ten, twenty, thirty dollars are, are depending on how much money you have in your account. It's it's like having another credit card. It's like having another rewards card without having to make transactions. It's nice. It's a nice little um, addition. It's a few hundred dollars in a, in, within a year. Um, but I find myself that using these online banks, you you are missing some features like withdrawing cash. You know, there's a limit to how much, you know, 500 to a thousand dollars you can withdraw from an ATM. So if you're trying to like buy a car, a used car, or if you're, if you're doing some business on the side, you actually need a brick and mortar bank or maybe like a Capital One 360 account where they have physical branches, but those are only in the Northeast area where you can actually go in and deposit large sums of cash. Um, that's gonna be a hassle. Um, I know I know a lot of my coworkers who are on the older side, they, they like going into the bank, they like seeing a person and, and getting customer service. I could care less. I don't need to see anybody. Yeah, Dennis Dunn, you said, I love when banks pay me. Let me, get, let me pull you up, Dennis. He said, I love when banks pay me. I like that too, Dennis. Um, so yeah, I haven't had, um, but as far as the chat bots go, I'm sure it went into more detail in that article, but I, I haven't had much luck with those chat bots. I remember that was all the craze like three or four years ago, but what, ha what value are they adding to us? They're just kind of a stepping. They basically just allow you to they help the company triage people into into finding the right customer service agent, the right department, which is not much, not much of a help. You know, I, I try to get through to um, to customer service as soon as possible, right? Because they're the only ones that can really help you. So, um, is Dave Ramsey's Gazelle car worth getting? So, if you don't know, listen, I you might not agree with Dave Ramsey. He he hates credit cards, but. I, you know, he, he has a, he's a wealth of information he is launching. So his, his company, Dave Ramsey, uh, Ramsey solution has launched a debit card, bank account and app called Gazelle. Gazelle has no, uh, no monthly fees or minimum balance requirements. Also Gazelle isn't a bad financial product. You're better off using a rewards card for purchases and paying the bill in full every month. So you just, listen, if, if you, if you're a good steward of your money and you, and you don't go and spend more than you make or you know that you have in your account using credit cards is great it offers you know safeguards it offers you know protections and benefits but on top of everything you're getting rewards glorious rewards and you know you can get anywhere from two to five to six percent if you have like an amex um you know this new shopper card from am for i'm sorry you can get the Amex uh, Blue Cash Preferred, You're getting six percent back in a few categories, and uh, in other cars, City Custom Cash, you're getting five percent back in any category you choose. It's hard to give that up. It's free money. Um, so, but you know, D Dave Ramsey, uh, this makes sense for him because he is a he is a juggernaut in the finance space. So this makes complete sense for him. So JP Morgan Chase crypto wallet trademark is approved. So listen, these these big companies, these big credit issuers are going full steam ahead with crypto. I, I'm not seeing it, but um, JP Morgan has re registered a digital wallet brand. The bank filed a trademark for a JP Morgan wallet in July of 2020. The filing was finally approved on November 15th. The, the text of the trademark indicates that it can be applied to online services, including cryptocurrency, payment processing, the electronic transfer for virtual currencies by an online community and the exchange of virtual currencies. The trademark does not exclusively apply to crypto services though. It can also be applied to other financial services, including virtual checking accounts, ACH payments, e-check e processing and bill payments. So listen, this is called JP Morgan wallet. This could also be an online checking account. This could be their play. This could be a competitor. Listen, I want to mark this word here. This could be a competitor to the um, Capital One 360 account. I would love to see that because, you know, these big banks, they need to get more serious and competitive about these online banks because if they don't, they sit on their hands, they're going to eat their lunch. You know, and they, um, the newer, the millennials and the Gen Zers, the Zoomers are going to be signing up for these new online banks. 
Um, so next, buy now, pay later often is often a debt trap. So <laughs> again, buy now, pay later is everywhere. Some people call it a debt trap. A survey in March by LendingTree, a financial services company, found that 42% of those who took advantage of buy now, pay later offers paid late fees. That means a huge number of Americans are overextending themselves using these loans, the, the report noted. In a time of skyrocketing inflation, rising interest rates, and overall economic uncertainty, that's a big deal. Ex except for accounts that go to a collection. Most buy now, pay later transactions are not reported to credit bureaus. Oh, that's a big one, guys. It's not reported to credit bureaus, so no BNPL lenders have, have no idea how many other loans their customers have with other lenders are BNPL companies. And unlike credit card issuers, uh, these, these lenders don't check whether potential borrowers have enough resources to repay their debt. So that's a big deal. So uh, a huge kind of a negative if, with buy now pay later versus credit cards is that at least credit cards will report all that favorable on-time payment data to the credit agencies further building your credit. So if you want to apply for larger loans, personal loan, if you want to apply for a biz, you know, help with a personal guarantee for a business loan, if you want a mortgage at a good rate, you want those good payments stacking up in your favor. And you're not going to get that with buy now, pay later services. And then um, this 42% number is eerily similar to the percentage of people that roll over um, credit card debt or carry a balance. That, that percentage of people always hovers around 40%. So it seems like the same percentage of people carry a balance and also don't pay their buy now, pay later pay, you know, payments on time and, and, and incur fees. So um, this, this makes a lot of sense. And I have a piece of news for you guys that I don't think many people know about. And it's with this new US Bank Shopper Cash Rewards card. Um, I didn't know this, but you, you look at the screen grab of this card, it's like glowing. It's got this soft glow to it. There's a reason for that. It actually, it actually lights up when you use the wireless contact payment. So if you, as soon as you go to wirelessly touch that to the terminal point of sale, it's going to light up um, the US Bank logo on certain cards. So I, I should say, preface that by saying it's not every US Bank card. You have to sign up and apply to get the special LED version of the card. Do you think that's a big deal? Do you, is, is that pretty cool? I, I've never seen this before. I, you know, I guess they're, they're using the power from the uh, uh, NFC, the, the, you know, the wireless power from NFC or near field communication to, uh, to make this happen. That's a pretty, it's a gimmick for sure, you know, but it's, it's different. Yo, Dennis said, McMillian said, that sounds cool. Would you would you sign up if it um I think it's free as well. So that's a good thing. I don't think anybody would pay for that. Dennis, Dennis Dunn said, we got another Dennis in here. He said, get lit when buying beer. Yes. You definitely gonna get lit. All right, so I want to move on to um I got approved for two new cards. You know, I decided to take the plunge and apply for two business cards. So I did two new things in the past um, week or so. And I got two business cards, which I don't, I've never had a business card before. And I got two Amex cards and I never had an Amex card before. So I, this is a completely new relationship for me. Um, and so I started with the American Express business cash because you know my philosophy is, is cash back. I really don't mess with those you know, reward system. So, you know, membership rewards. I know a lot of people value that very highly. They like to use that to, you know, transfer to travel partners and extend the value of that. I don't do that. So I like to be very simple with my uh, strategy. And so it comes with a, a $250 uh, sign up bonus when you spend $3,000, which I loved. The reason I signed up for, the reason I signed up for business cards is because you know i have a content creation business that i'm expanding i'm paying for more um you know services that i need for for making videos and things like that and then i wanted to a huge benefit of business cards is that you're able to kind of hide your utilization so instead of spending on my personal cards and 
you know, raising my utilization rate, which lowers my credit score, I don't have to touch my personal cards anymore. And then also, I don't have to co-mingle my uh, business expenses with my personal expenses, thus making my tax, um, you know, my tax season and figuring all that tax information out that much easier. And so I'm able to, and th there was actually one more benefit I'm forgetting. Um, also, yeah, you're getting new sign-up bonuses. So basically, it's a whole new ecosystem of credit cards that can earn new sign-up bonuses, which I love. F. Davis, what's up, man? You said keep the good credit card info flowing, sir. Listen, you know I'm going to do that. Thank you for the super chat, F. Davis. Thank you for hanging in there with me. And then so the next card I got, you know I had to stick with Amex. I got the Amex Business um, Prime card because I do a lot of shopping on, on, on Amazon. Uh, the good thing about that, and Danny, this is shout out to you, brother. You said um, that uh, with this card, it comes with a $125 sign up bonus instantly for, for Amazon purchases. And then when you sign up for an Amazon business account, you get an additional, I believe it was $50. So that's a total of what? Um, like when was it? 175 Is that right? Yeah. I think that's right on that. So listen, it was great. I think I got a $15,000 credit limit with this card and I got a $10,000 limit with the uh, Amex Blue Business Cash. So I'm happy with that. I actually had to call in you guys. I actually, I wanted to get a feel for um, the customer service, you know, cause I, everybody was glowing about how good their customer service was. And guess what? It was good. The experience with customer service, it was fast. I, the first person I got to spoke perfect English. It was easy to understand them. They were very polite for a change. You know, I'm here in New York. So when I call in a customer service, sometimes, you know, it makes my blood boil. Like people don't care about you around here. They're, they're gonna be very short, you know, and they're gonna be aggressive. So it was nice to talk to somebody nice with Amex customer service and they, they definitely get you squared away quickly. So I, I'm gonna have a, I, I believe that's a good way to start out with them. So um, next story, real quick, um, my next card. And so, you know, I'm in the business cards now. I'm, I finally, I took the plunge. I identify what I, what I wanna go for next. I'm gonna take a little hiatus. I'm gonna get into the garden. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna lock it down. I'm not gonna apply for anything new. And I'm gonna try to hold out and go for the Chase Inc business unlimited the reason i want it is look at that sign up bonus i'm on i'm on cardratings.com if you want to access cards like this just go to the link in the pinned comment in this uh in this chat in this stream and you can find it um it's under business cards but it comes with a 900 dollar sign up bonus when you spend what is it just a few thousand dollars it's i think it's six thousand dollars it's amazing it's almost a thousand bucks but um, it's with Chase, you get an unlimited 1.5% uh, cash back with that card. If you guys know about any other card, this seemed like this kind of jumped out the page at me because th this is cash back focus, which I'm all about. And, and Chase is great. And then finally, guys, if you want to get access to my 12 credit limit increase uh, strategies cheat sheet, I have that in the link pinned comment. Um, you can download that. Just um, just go to my website and um, and look for that download. How's everybody doing? I just want to make sure I got everybody covered here. We got, listen, we broke a record tonight. If you can listen, like this stream. We have 110 people um, in this in this chat right now. So actually, oh wow, it's 138. It just updated, my goodness. It's good to have everybody. If I haven't seen you here, listen, let's talk. What, what have you gotten um, approved for? What credit cards have you gotten approved for this week or over the past two weeks? And did you get any credit limit increases? Cause I want to shout you out. Yo, Plumber said Chase is the best. Chase is the best. Okay. Well, you know, I have one Chase card where that's, uh, I haven't seen them being the best, but I think what I'm finding out now is that, um, you know, I wasn't a big fan of Amex and Chase, but I'm finding that they have better business cards. When I when I look on the business side, they seem to have better um, cards for me. 
and which is really interesting. Oh, Eduardo Lopez, what's up, buddy? You said just got approved for the VentureX with a minimum limit of $10,000. Listen, Eduardo, you're going to get what I call the money gun. Check this out. Ten k listen. 10K? That's awesome, man. $10,000 is good to see that. That's actually, actually the minimum starting limit for the Visa Infinite card um, with the VentureX. So you have a lot of room to grow there. Jamie Hanlon said, I just got approved for the City Custom Cash with a $6,900 limit. Jamie, where you at? Money guy. I got to be conservative because I'm going to have this whole room just, you know, a layer of $100 bills on the floor here. <laughs> All right, Barbara Brinson, you said, I love Navy Fed. They treat you like a human. How sad is it that that's the bar? If you just, just treat me like a human being, just do that, bare minimum. And I've heard good things about Navy Fed. Um, and their customer service, they're award winning as well. I'm, I haven't, I don't have any accounts with them, but you, you, I've definitely heard good things. Right of the line said new BMO credit card, which let's see, which issuer is that? I'm not familiar with that uh, acronym, but you have an $8,000 limit cancel capital on Quicksilver as they wouldn't product change as I don't use it enough. Listen, sometimes you got to cancel. And I'm not mad at you for that. If it's not, if your car is not growing and you have no intention of using it in the future, you know, you got to look out for you and what you want. 8,000 bucks. Congratulations. I'm going to give you some confetti for that. Lummox, uh, a hired, a hired hoodlum. Listen, I just want to say, I am really, uh, impressed with, uh, some of the names that I've seen. I've seen some long YouTube um, channel names and people are getting very creative with this. It's like the title of a movie of a movie. This could be a series. So I got the eBay MasterCard with a $5,700 credit limit. Nice, man. Listen. $5,700. Bucks, that's a lot. Kamar Turner. I got approved for a $30,000 venture x card wow listen i'm gonna have to release the whole thing all right three trigger pulls for you kamar um apex coin said what's a good time period to wait between getting new credit cards my last credit card i got was in June. So, you know, I've heard a good rule of thumb is, you know, if you want to be conservative is one credit card every six months, people would say, but, um, a lot of people, you know, I, I've, for example, have signed up for probably like, you know, I, I applied for both of these, um, Amex cards. That's how they look. I, I applied for both of these Amex cards. in one go so you know some it can be the same you know hard pull you can use the same hard pull for uh for two cars at once um but a lot of people try to stay under the chase 524 rule so if you're trying to go for chase cards you got to stay below um five approved accounts in the last 24 months if you're not going for chase cards then you go for what you want that's what i would say so just um you know i i i personally have done we got approved for about five cards, six cards this year. So that's just that should tell you where I'm at. Dan Smith, what's up? You said Cal gonna go all Scrooge McDuck. Yeah, it, it does look like that, right? <laughs> just gonna be throwing the money. All right, so um Oh, so I got, I got some super chats here. Gabrielle Williams. Thank you, Gabrielle. Thank you for the super chat. Um, 
welcome to the stream um I, and so i really appreciate the 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 thought danny thank you for another super chat leveling up yes that's what we're always trying to do one percent better every single day that's that's how you level up dj bruce wayne you said tell me about it i'm late to this party uh what's up cal i'm familiar what's up uh bruce wayne Um, Richard Calaby, you said, I hear the 524 rule doesn't apply if you are a high roller, meaning having assets over a million with them. Oh, I haven't heard that before. That's interesting. I could see why that would be the case. I mean, everything is negotiable, really. And I could see them adjusting the rules for uh, you know, a high net worth individual. I'm going to hold on to that. I'm going to see if I, if I can find more evidence of that. Joan, what's up, Joan? I think I've, I've, I've seen you here before. So welcome back love and the positivity thank you for the super chat joan um it's good to have you here on the stream sharing that uh those positive vibes oh mr rubio said kamehameha that's the dragon ball z reference there i got you um barbara you said just did a cap one uh product change last night thanks to you uh, the Quicksilver. Nice. Did you have like the, the Capital One Quicksilver one card that had like the $40 annual fee? That Listen, a lot of people don't know that they have an easy uh, product change, like an online product change uh, website. A lot, a lot of credit card issuers require you to call in the product change. So it just becomes like a lengthy process. And it's just nice to be able from the comfort of your home, maybe you get home from work or it's the middle of the night, just be able to look and see if you can just quickly switch your cards out. Dennis McMillian, listen, I appreciate that, brother. Dennis, I think it's the first time you've been here, and I thank you for um, sharing your time with me. Appreciate the super chat. Dave C. said, you got approved for a Navy Federal flagship rewards card with $35,000 on limit, um, but can't get a credit card increase with my Capital One card. Also, it's the longest card I've had. Listen, so many people have told me that Capital One seems to have been doing this for a long time now before I've even before I even knew about this um, before I was in the credit card space. Capital One has been uh, bucketing people. Uh, congrats on the uh, flagship card. The flagship card is one of the is the toughest card to get with Navy Federal. You kind of have to build up. You know, I sent a um, if you don't know, I sent and it's actually going to be the um, part of my next video I'm working on. It's going to take me a little bit, but it's on Navy Federal. And, and basically it, it's a case study on how one individual was able to increase their credit limit or, or, or get approved for two cards and and just develop a very deep relationship with Navy Federal in a short period of time. I'm just gonna walk through the steps of what they did and kind of break that down. So congrats. And a lot of people are getting high limits with Navy Federal, so don't sleep on Navy Fed. Jamie Hanlon said, because of your video, I was able to product change my Capital One card a few months ago. Nice, man. I'm, I, I love hearing those success stories, and I'm happy that um, these videos are helping uh, some people. All right, so um, Rob, you said Capital One makes no sense. They make no sense. I have a $30,000 limit on my Venture X card and $300, 300, th I, listen, that was just offensive what I just did. I said, you have a $300 income. You have a $300,000 annual income and they denied me the saver card. You know, let, speaking of the saver card, it's interesting. They, they treat the saver card independently of their other credit products. I've noticed that they won't allow you to product change into it. And it seems like for some reason, it's like a different department altogether. It's so weird. Their structure is, is, de is very strange. Uh, Richard Calaby said, I'm a fan of developing relationship with banks and credit unions, not a fan of churning or other shady tactics. Okay, that's an actually interesting assertion there. Um, I, I think that a lot of people don't consider churning to be shady. I mean, it's allowable. I mean, if you work within the credit card issuers, um, you know, rule set, then I think it's okay. I personally wouldn't churn cards because it just takes, you know, a spreadsheet and you, you know, it takes some extra time to, to get it done. And, um, you know, it is frowned upon, but, um, um, yeah, I personally don't churn cards. 
but I know a, I know a considerable portion of people do churn. And uh, let me actually let me take a poll, you guys, and you can you guys can let me know. I'm in this poll. And I'm going to ask, do you churn credit cards? You guys let me know what you think. Do you churn credit cards? If you could vote on that poll for me, let the community know if you if you churn. I'm about to say if you troll, if you churn credit cards or not. Right of the line said I churn bank accounts. You know, I've been actually thinking about getting into that. Some of those bank account bonuses are super high. They go like up to $1,000 for a sign up bonus. But you definitely have to have the capital to move around. You have to have some savings ready to go to um, to get that done. Um, but yeah, I've seen more and more people doing that. Um, I wish there was an easy way to generate direct deposits. If there was a, a legal, easy way to generate direct deposits, um, then that would be awesome. I, I would be doing that myself because so many of those bonuses are hinging on you setting up direct deposits. They know that you don't want to reset up, you know, that with your job. It just looks real. It looks silly to your job if you're trying to set up multiple direct deposits. Dennis McMillian said, what is churning? Churning is just basically, you know, churning is just, um, what's it, what's it simple? I don't want to overcomplicate this. Basically you sign up for a card just to get the sign up bonus. And then you immediately cancel it a few months down the line before you can, you know, you don't really use it. It doesn't earn the credit card company any money. You don't pay the annual fee. And so you're basically able to, um, you know, get that early sign up bonus and get out of town. And that's, that's what churning is. The, the credit card companies really want you to hang on. They want you to use all of their, ben their, their benefits that make the money. They want you to use the card constantly because they're earning, uh, you know, 3% uh, kind of merchant, uh, what they call interchange fees that they charge the merchants. So the more you use the card, the more they earn. And um, if you don't do that, then they're losing money on you. Michael Bates, I think I know you, Michael. Did, uh, you're... Yeah, Michael, what's up, man? I... Michael, do I know you personally? If I do, what's up? All right, Jay Davenport, what's up, man? You said, I just got a Capital and Platinum Thanksgiving week uh, weekend. Okay. Now, the Platinum, I think that's the entry-level card. So, listen, if you're building credit... Um, more power to you on your journey. It's gonna, it's gonna end up with you having much better cards. So uh, congratulations on that. All right, Dan Smith gave me a, a, a real pro tip here. He said business checking accounts is the way to generate uh, direct deposits. Okay, I'm gonna check that out. I'm gonna do some research. Listen, I'm always learning. And I need you guys to teach me um, uh, when I when I don't you know, understand something. Michael Bates said, I got my uh, OK, I don't know you. So got my first ten thousand dollar limit card with the city custom cash card. All right. So, you know, I'm a big lover of the custom cash cards. I have two of those and I use them for groceries and I use them for uh, dining out. And so our, our delivery food and it's awesome. I get, I basically max it out every month. This is great. Um, so $10,000 limit, Michael Bates, you got the back camera. Oh, I'm out, I'm out. Oh, I still got some for you. I'm jammed up, guys. Oh, we're gonna get it fixed right here on the air. All right, Michael Bates. All right, um, Dennis Dunn, you said Citizen banned over $600 to open an account. That's this, that's a good sign of bonus.
Yeah, um, real quick, uh, Michael. Yes, you can have two of them if you. This is what I did. This is this is how I got two city custom cash cards. I first signed up for the city custom cash card for the first one, and then I product changed from the double cash card into the city custom cash card. There are actually people online that I've seen. I've seen stories of people having three and four city custom cash cards. I'm not sure if that's still allowable, but just know you can have multiple ones, which is really nice. Yeah, Jay Davenport, you said, um, I need to get business credit, but I'm having trouble. What is the best for just starting a business and easiest to get? I think Amex is the, I think Amex is the best way to go, honestly. I know that they they were easy for me to sign up for too. Um, you know, everybody's you know credit report is going to be different, but um, I've heard similar from others that Amex is 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 just an all around. It's an easier. It's going to be easier to go with Amex than Chase. Chase is tougher because they have that 524 rule in place, and I think it applies to business cards. Yep, Danny just backed me up. So Amex business cards are literally the easiest to get. Sylvester, what's up? You said, hey man, I'm new to credit cards. I've had a Bank of America credit card for about a year. I'm trying to build my credit, but I'm at a loss at the moment. Okay, well, if you're trying to build credit, you know, I know the best entry level cards are gonna be Discover It card. You can't go wrong with that. And um, if you have an Apple, if you have an iPhone, the Apple card is great for just starting out. But you eventually wanna end up um, with one of the better cards and that's going to be a two percent flat rate card and then a city custom cash card after that that's what i always recommend i think it just it's just a no-brainer to me because it's just, it gives you two percent back on everything and then the five percent back on your top spending category so you know you're, you're guaranteed to, to max it out in groceries or something get 25 bucks a month and then just two percent on all your other purchases uh, Dark Dude 2000, what's up, man? You said, hey, Cal, have you done anything with Truist? I got approved for a few cards. $7,000 on each card. One one is metal. Nice. Okay. 7K on each card. I've heard of Truist. I have not done any videos on Truist, though. I haven't done any videos on Truist. Thank you for um, bringing it up. I have to look into that. Alex Jones, what's up? How was um, how was that interview with Kanye? Alex Jones, Did I do, is this the wrong guy? <laughs> Welcome to the stream, Alex. Uh, were you scared, Mr. Jones? All right, um, another uh, quick, Michael Bates, you said, what's a good car for points or rewards on gas and travel? So a good gas car, if you have Verizon, then I like my Verizon Visa, but that's that only limits you to using that to reimburse, you know, Verizon purchases um, or service. Um, but uh, other than that, um, you could go that route. The city custom cash is great uh, for for gas. Um, uh, the, the latest travel card, that's that I like and which is the Wells Fargo autograph card you're getting three percent back in all the major travel categories so that that's good um, if you can deal with Wells Fargo which a lot of people don't like them um, then that's a good card to have Um, so everybody, listen, it's been an epic live stream. We broke records tonight. It's so good to share this moment with you guys. I do this every Sunday at 7 p.m. So expect me back next Sunday, 7 p.m. I'm going to schedule the next stream. Thank you for guys for hanging out. And I'm going to head out now. Have a good night and a good week.